live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Emerald Planet. All the ecology news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's your host, Executive Director of the Emerald Planet, Dr. Sam Lee Hancock. Hello and welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you for being with us as we come in on a week-to-week -week basis from the United States and looking around the globe in 144 different nations, looking for those thousand best practices, technology, services, and products as we move around the globe. And we're looking at how we're going to provide for, say, 2 billion new people coming on the planet by 2050. And so with 9 billion people here, how are we going to provide the food, the fuel, the fiber, all the basic infrastructure that they need? And I have someone who's actually working on part of this, which is the energy side of that. This is Callie Moore. She's the multifamily solar installation supervisor for what's called Grid Alternatives, Mid-Atlantic. And Callie, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Well, thank you for having us, Doctor. Glad to have you with us. And it's just wonderful the work that you're doing and the communities that you're reaching into, particularly the various wards, because we've been working there for a number of years. And the people there really deserve to have this kind of alternative energy. But tell us a little bit about the mission and the vision as far as grid alternatives. And what does the word grid alternatives actually mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for asking. So in terms of our, vi our vision for the organization, um, we look to, we want to see a movement towards clean renewable energy that involves everyone. And in terms of the mission, it's to have a successful transition to provide renewable energy technology and job training to the underserved communities that we serve and we represent. Now, looking at uh, these particular communities that you're going in, why did you select these particular communities? Why is that important? Well, that's a great question. I can't say that I myself uh, selected these communities, but I know that for our founders, uh, Tim and Erica, uh, that it was important to them to make sure that these communities, these underserved communities, uh, often had zero representation when it came to things. Um, you know, w in regards like what you were talking about in the beginning, whether it's food, water, resources, um, and that's in okay. in this movement towards clean renewable technology, well, our founders really wanted to make sure that every voice was lifted and everyone was a part of this movement because in order for us to have and to move towards a sustainable future, that does need to include everyone, not just the few 1%. That's fantastic. And you've done an absolutely wonderful video and it's ready. So let's look at this. This is going to give us a good kickoff. Also, we're going to see your executive director. Okay, great. And then we're going to carry right on right now. So let's see the video and I feel like I'm right back. back. Grid Alternatives is the nation's largest nonprofit solar installer where we do installations that directly benefit low to moderate income communities and we use a job training model to do those installations themselves. Folks can receive a system and receive the direct savings benefit right away without having to invest anything in it. And obviously they're the most underserved folks in our communities, sometimes, you know, folks that don't have any other means. Yeah, I have a high electric bill anyway because I can't stand heat and that air conditioner might run 24-7 in the summertime. At first I thought I wasn't going to be able to get it. They came back and told me that I needed to, a new roof and I said, oh God, I can't afford a new roof. And he said, but the good part about it, Miss Swan, is we will put it up for you with no charge. And I, I was so happy. <laughs> I felt like I wanted to hug him, you know. Three or four years ago, a Pepco bill in the summer may have been about $80. Now it's about 4 or $5. If you're interested in getting on the roof, if you're, if you're interested in helping with the program, they will definitely allow you to do it. And they keep you safe. I tell you, I just think this uh, video is absolutely fantastic. And when you think about $80 and now to 4 or $5 in a month mm -hmm. for electric energy, I mean, that just does so much for these families. Yeah. So looking at this, we, in essence, we've seen what GRID is doing, but just explain for us what it is doing, and then the why does it really matter to be in these communities, which is what we really want to get at. Yeah, um, well here specifically in the Mid-Atlantic, which is the office that I myself work out of, um, you know, we want to go into the communities, a lot of times we're working in Ward 7 and Ward 8, uh, and these communities, you know, are a lot of disadvantaged communities that don't get a lot of attention and often don't have a lot of people help trying to help them move out of um, the situations that they're currently in. Um, and so we want to go in and provide 
an opportunity for them to get that job training so that we can have these individuals get a sustainable job, one that's going to have a good income, a good solid income, and has longevity in that career. It's something that they can grow from, um, something that they can develop themselves, they can bring that back to their family, they can give back to their community, they can drive around their communities when, when they have kids, if they already have kids, when the kids get a little older, when they're grandparents, and they can drive around and say, I was a part of this, I was a part of that, I was a part of this movement. And when you know, we look, you, we look forward in the future and these communities can look back, they can say, you know, I was a part of that movement. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And, and really, it's something that's very concrete. When you see the, they're lifting those panels up on the roof, yeah. the installing them. I mean, you're supervising a lot of these, uh, yeah. these installations. But it really does mean something when you go out there and you can actually see it or you go home at the end of the day and all of a sudden half, you know, this whole set of panels are up on the roof. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in one or two more days it's going to be hooked up and, you know, people are going to be really transformed. Now, how does it feel to you when you're, you're talking to people, you're with them day in and day out, you've got the crews on the roof or in the backyard, and all of a sudden, you know, they're coming out and saying, wow, this is exciting. I, <laughs> this is really, you know, I didn't know if it was real or not. How does that make you feel, and, and how do you translate that enthusiasm back to your crews that are working for this person that's standing literally right in front of you, yeah. and maybe the whole family's there? I think the best part is I don't even have to do any work there. The work speaks for itself. The homeowner speaks for themselves. The work that we're doing and giving back. I think everyone that's a part of it, you know, if they come out, whether they're a volunteer, uh, whether they're a job trainee, or whether they're an employee, I think everyone who takes part in it has an understanding from the, the beginning of what they're about to be a part of, and, and it's something that they've chose to be a part of. Um, and for me, it's a privilege. It's a blessing. It's an honor. Um, you know, I wake up, I've been doing this for five years now, and you know, there's very seldom days that I wake up and I say to myself, oh, I'm going to work. You know, it's, it's one of those things that I, this is what I would like to do after work, after your nine to five. If I could spend my time doing something, this is what I would do. But instead, that is my nine to five or 430 to 430, whichever you look at. But, right. um, you know, this is my every day and, and it's a blessing to be able to give back to communities that I'm not even from, but to be able to take part in that movement with them. Now, looking at uh, the people here, this is uh, part of your crew out there, and you're working really hard. Uh, it's a good mix. And uh, tell us uh, kind of the backgrounds and how do they feel about what they're doing actually be in the community? Because some of these people actually are from those communities, and they're kin to the people yeah. that they're actually uh, doing the work for. Yeah, well, we have uh, a on my, on my crew specifically, we have two individuals who are from the community, um, and one, who, one in particular I'd like to speak about. Um, you know, he's, he's in his, his 40s, and a lot of his life he spent, you know, on the streets, um, various, you know, doing various things, and GRID to him has been the turnaround point for him. It's been the opportunity that he said, I can come to work every day, I can wake up, I can be proud of what I'm doing, what I'm putting my time and energy towards, and it can help me provide a better future, if not for myself, for my kids. You know, he's, and he has a few kids, and one is still in, uh, you know, about 14 years old, living with him and his mom, and, um, you know, it feels good to him. He feels proud of the work that he does, and it's something he wants to continue to be a part of, and, um, you know, and that, that is what keeps me coming back every day. And, and another individual is, uh, we have our Troops of Solar program, and so uh, this gentleman, you know, for him, it's, he's not from the community, but for him, it's still a, a way to give back and a way to serve his country in a different way, a much yeah. different way. Yeah, and we've had people on before that actually have gone through that transition. Actually, they were 20, 30 years in the military. They came back. Uh, maybe they had uh, PTSD and, you know, all these other uh, traumas from that. And they felt like going to work was their therapy. Right. And that they felt so good about doing that that actually they started the healing process. And some mm -hmm. of them were sitting on the roof saying, you know, this is therapy for me, you know, and I feel absolutely fantastic about it. But going to this age mix that you have, it's just like uh, in the Peace Corps now, more uh, Peace Corps volunteers are over the age of 50 okay. than they are, you know, 20s and 30s, mm. which is a complete reverse of what, you know, John F. Used Kennedy to wanted to have, right? <laughs> and so what do you see of this mix on the site, just like with this group here, where you have this mixing of the ages, not only of, you know, males and females and, in inner city and people coming from the rural areas, but the different ages. Yeah, wow. In terms of ages, Great Alternatives is welcome to anyone ages 16 and up. You have to be 18 to get on the roof. Uh, but in my, my years with this company, I have seen 
anyone ages 16 and all the way to people in their 70s. I've had a, a wife and a husband come out who had been together for 50 years and uh, you know, it was things like that that they did together that kept them together. Um, I've had master electricians all the way to people who have never held a screwdriver in their life. And we take those individuals and we say, yes, you are welcome to be here and we're gonna, we're gonna install this system. And by the end of the day, you will have successfully accomplished this and you have been a part of that. Um, and, and yeah, so we get, you know, all, all ages and anyone who wants to come out and, and says they're willing to go up on that roof, then we, we say, okay, we put them in a harness and we put them up on that roof. Yeah, I tell you, it's just amazing what they're doing up there. But being a woman in a very non-traditional industry and in non-traditional work areas, what, what do you feel about doing that? I know what you've told me about how you feel about your job and the excitement and all that, but I mean, in a, in a sense, you're a trailblazer. You're a pioneer and all this. How does that feel? And how do you feel that responsibility that actually is on your shoulders, you know, to be a good example for all that? Yeah, well, thank you for that. Um, I'd say I don't, I try not to let myself take on any extra uh, pressure to feel like I need to perform. Um, I know a lot of other individuals, you know, I work on the commercial side of things and we work with a lot of other trades out there and Often when you come onto site at first, you're just not taken seriously because you're a woman. And then by the time they see me up on the roof and lifting the panels and driving the heavy equipment, there's a little bit more respect there, but then there's still a lot of uh, demeaning comments made, um, you know, and you just, you just look past that and you just keep doing your job. And, you know, if it's not, if it's not everyone, if it's one person that you inspire, if it's one person that you show that they can do it, that they are capable, and they can see that in you and they can see themselves in you, then it's worth it. And, mm -hmm. you know, my dad was a landscaper. He worked in construction and, it, you know, he, never, he told me, never let it hold you back. And I never did. You know, I can play with the boys and, <laughs> you know, it doesn't intimidate me. It's, it's, it's what I love to do and I'm not going to yeah. let that get in my In way. a sense, more than that, you're, you're outdoing the boys. <laughs> and I think you need to think about that because that's really the truth. Now, looking at it, and we're, ju we're just flat out of time, but looking at we'll go out on this. A as a female, a leader in the community, a leader as far as grid alternatives, how are they training, molding, helping you to move beyond that and to help the people that are giving the demeaning remarks move beyond that? And how do you see that impacting over the next 5, 10, or 15 years how grid is going to be able to expand? And we got to be quick. Yeah, I We're think Grid, you know, wants to be specific and strategic about how we, how and where we get our individuals from, um, you know. But over the next you know, next generations, I think Grid is just looking at how can we continue to diversify this workforce, whether it's the people of color, minorities groups, uh, or women, you know, and just making sure that we continue to set that example and give people responsibility and leadership when they deserve it. That's fantastic. This is uh, Kelly Moore, Grid Alternatives, as we create. I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. I love it. Cross-referencing travel sites. And booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh. But now they're like... <laughs> Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I thought I had it under control. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for them, Mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. 
You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> To the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Welcome to the Emerald Planet as we look around the globe each week for what we call the best of the best, the thousand best practices, technology, services, and products, and the people, of course, that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And I have someone sitting beside me that's really doing outstanding work as far as how we carry forward into the future to get off of uh, fossil fuels, to be able to provide more renewable energy, at the same time to bring green jobs and even opportunities for uh, inner city business development, particularly for female-led organizations. And this is Serena Bruce. She's a residential construction manager for what's called Grid Alternatives in Mid-Atlantic. And Serena, welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you here. We're going to uh, play a uh, video of uh, some of the work that you're doing as far as grid alternatives are concerned. And then we're going to come back and uh, talk through this and show some slides. How's that? Sounds good. Okay, let's bring up the video. Job training was always sort of on the radar when Grid Mid-Atlantic started. Mid-Atlantic employers find it somewhat or very difficult to hire qualified employees and our SolarWorks DC training program can feed right into that. In order to get a job, you need to have some hands-on experience. In order to get that hands-on experience, you need to get the job. So we're kind of that middleman or that middle person to help folks get that little bit of hands-on so they can run off and, and you know, start their careers. From day one, it's been hands-on. I'm assisting in not just helping with the electrical box, but put laying beams and rails and cutting the rails and laying the trunk cables and the microinverters. And then day two, you're putting the solar panel down. It's always been a each one teach one. You know, as soon as you learn something, you teach the next person. Doesn't matter if you're the supervisor or you're a trainee, first time volunteer, or whatever. We worked with the industry to determine what types of skills they need in order to create our installer basics training. It's those basic skills that you need to really, um, you know, excel in the industry. Serena, I just think this is absolutely fantastic. And when I saw this by Nicole, your executive director, I said we really need to incorporate this in what we're doing because it really shows a, a good image and the one thing that comes through, and this is even the production crew was saying, is, is how much people seem to be enjoying their work and how they're contributing in the community. But why did you want to get in something? You see those panels, they're not light. You've got to get them up on the roof. You've got to put them in place. You've got to move them around. So why did you want to go into something that's a non-traditional for a female? And you're learning job skills, but also you're honing uh, your communications and your leadership skills at the same time. So how do you balance all that out and focus on the hard work that you're really doing? Sure, that's a hard one. Um, I actually originally uh, really loved the ocean. I love um, being outside. I just I knew that an office job wasn't really going to uh, satiate all of um, that activity. So. Mm -hmm. I um, ended up getting a social sciences degree and um, worked at many nonprofits. Um, I also grew up doing construction. My dad uh, works, worked for Caltrans in California, and my mom was just always very handy, so they always encouraged me to be whatever I wanted to do. And um, Basically, they taught me everything they knew. We'd buy houses and um, fix them up. And oh my goodness, I, so you really have this yeah. in your blood then. This <laughs> exactly. is like part of your DNA. Yeah, uh, other people would uh, have to take out the trash before going to the movies, and I got to grout the, ba the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was hard work, uh, but it was, you know, seeing something come together and finishing something is, mm -hmm. is really a, a great way. And um, grade kind of gives me both of those worlds. Uh, I get to be outside and um, also kind of focus on uh, honing my leadership skills and management skills. And um, I originally started in the field 
and now do much of the background work. Um, and I just, I feel like it's, it's really rewarding. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And, and you see these uh, panels and all that and the, the teams that you're working with. I mean, it really is a lot of work. But at the same time, it's something that you can do day to day when you leave at you know, 5 o'clock or 6 or 7, whenever it is you're getting off the job. You really have things that you can see. And I think that's a very, very important. But how long did it take you to get into GRID and start moving up through the chain and then to have this, uh, you know, being this position as far as a residential construction uh, manager, that's a very important job. So how long did it take you to do that? Was the, all this that you did as a youth prepared you for this? Um, I mean, it didn't. It didn't hurt, uh, but I basically started uh, as AmeriCorps, uh, which you guys will be talking about. Um, but basically, it's a one-year internship um, as a staff member with GRID. Um, they took a chance on me because I had never installed solar. Uh, I did have some type of construction background, mm -hmm. however. But um, so I learned on the go, uh, on the job site, uh, learn as we do, um, and then. After the year, uh, you're not guaranteed a job, uh, but I wanted to stay with them, and it happened that a construction assistant position opened. Um, so I've been with GRID for six years, ever since. That um, is fantastic, wow, and that, yeah. that seems to be a long time. But looking at, uh, this is the face of uh, some of the people, either they're volunteers or they're from the community or they're a client, but how long, how do people actually uh, get to into the program itself? Uh, what do they have to go through for that? And is there anything special, any requirements that they have to go through in order to uh, be a part of, you know, the grid alternatives and have the solar panels installed with their home? Um, so the clients that we serve um, are in underserved communities. Um, so our outreach coordinators go in, talk with them, mm -hmm. um, get all the paperwork that's necessary to qualify them. They're income qualified. Um, so we do have income qualified guidelines uh, that we follow. Uh, the construction team goes in, does a construction site visit. Uh, not every house is built for solar. Uh, so we take that in mind. We look at engineering challenges that might uh, come about with the house, how old it is, um, what the, like the roof shape is in, um, electrical, everything like that and decide uh, to move forward. Uh, if we decide to move forward, we do a design. It's all in-house, um, so we're all, we all kind of take parts in the designs. So you really, uh, as far as uh, being hands-on, I mean, it's more than that. It's just you're really doing the whole project. So you, you go in, you make contact in the community, you have someone that seems to qualify for this, and then you start through the design. Of course, you have to get stamp drawings, you have mm -hmm. to file it with the city. You've got all these things that are going on. I mean, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of moving parts. Yes. Yeah, um, it's a lot of multitasking and a lot of delegating and understanding what kind of process uh, works the most efficient and the best. Mm -hmm. uh, we really wanna be serving um, our homeowners, um, you know, the best service possible. Yeah. Uh, not only do we want them to enjoy working with us, but we also want, you know, at the end of the day, we want it to go smooth for them as well. Right. Now, looking at the, the single family systems that you're putting on, tell us a little bit about that. And then what are the savings that people are going to realize from something like this and the importance to them as far as whatever that savings in, in the communities where you're actually serving and uh, providing the service. Sure. Um, so when we go into installation, um, we do two main types of installation. One is on pitched roofs, mm -hmm. just composite shingle roofing. Uh, the other one is a parapet to parapet install, which we install on row homes. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little bit more challenging, a little bit logistically harder, and uh, the beams we pull up to the roof are almost 100 pounds. Um, mm. So it's definitely challenging. So this is physically challenging <laughs> as well as mentally challenging yes. and all that. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, that being said, it's uh, definitely difficult. Um, and then for the clients, um, basically, we work with them, we install their solar, um, you know, sometimes they um, provide us lunch, mm -hmm. and um, they even get up on the roof sometimes. 
to help us out. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because this is something you hear about with GRID, that people can become really involved in that. And I would assume, and I, I don't know this, maybe you can uh, educate me about this, as they get involved themselves in the community, they start taking hands-on action in their own home, do some of them then decide, hey, we want to volunteer and do other homes in the community, and or do they actually apply to GRID you know, for a full-time position, or both? Yes, um, so we work with volunteers, job trainees, and corporate volunteers. Um, so lots of our job trainees, which is through SolarWorks DC, which is a large portion of our residential solar installs that we do, uh, are training up a 25-person cohort. Um, after that 12-week program or a six-week program that they're finished with, um, a lot of them do, um, we help them find jobs in the industry and, and sometimes they do land back at GRID. GRID is a really new, unique place. Um, it's really welcoming and, and, and helps you grow into the industry. Mm -hmm. And so I think people really understand that. So we once see they're that, out- You see that through the video is that, you know, it's just obvious, you know, we've seen several clips out of the video and people really are enjoying themselves. They enjoy being around each other. But being a woman in a non-traditional industry, is there anything there that's particularly challenging that, uh, that just propels you forward or makes you slow down a little bit? What about it? Sure, um, so construction is, just a hard job, generally. Uh, we deal with weather, we deal outside a lot. Um, we deal with lots of challenges on the site and before the job begins. Um, so I think it's a challenge, challenging industry to be in, in general. Um, as a woman, I think the biggest challenge that I've faced is um, not, people don't think that you're capable of the same things. Um, when I go onto a construction site and somebody sees that I'm a young woman, um, they, they make assumptions that maybe I don't know what I'm talking about or how long have I been with grid alternatives and that kind of thing. And I think that's challenging because of the fact that uh, sometimes they don't expect you to accomplish as much as somebody else. Yeah, well, we're out of time. I hate to say that, but uh, looking at all this, and we're going to go out with that, that picture up there, uh, what do you see for a grid over the next three to five, ten years as far as expanding into the communities, and how do you see yourself fitting into that? And we got to be quick. Um, so I think grid is definitely going to expand. I think um, our mission is great and needed everywhere. And I hope that in the future they expand into many different regions and, and we can see more good offices growing. That's fantastic. This is uh, Serena Bruce. She's a residential construction manager. Uh, grid Alternatives in Atlantic. And it's a fantastic story that you're telling about being involved in that, what you're going through, but really contributing into the communities where you're touching. And thank you for being with us as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet. So... I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. <laughs> So, how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> 150 over 90. 
180 over 111. 160 over 110, I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. We're back to the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. Thank you for being with us as we're looking around the globe in 144 different countries. And what we're looking for are the alternatives that are now evolving and becoming more apparent in local communities. The United States now is about 80% urban. So how are we gonna be able to take care of all the people that are moving into more urban areas? And at the same time, to wean the planet from fossil fuels into more alternatives. And I have a gentleman sitting right beside me who's actually doing a lot of all these different things, and we're going to learn about that, and also how to reach into communities and actually get people involved in creating their own futures. This is Andrew. He goes by Andy Eames. He's a communications and events fellow at Grid Alternatives Mid-Atlantic. And Andy, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Why is Grid Alternatives itself focused on challenging and challenged communities and that you feel it's so so important actually that more and more communities get involved as far as solar as renewable energy in the inner city why, okay. why this match okay so uh, I think um, grid focuses on low-income communities um, because I mean there's just such a, a need there mm -hmm. um, so these communities uh, um, don't have much coming to them um, from many different directions. So uh, Grid saw that uh, opening and moved into the space to uh, help out. And I think it's important that uh, we move um, inner cities towards a renewable energy future because there's a lot of impact to be had. I mean, as you just said, uh, a huge segment of the population is is living in inner cities now um, and there's a lot of roof and a lot of impact to be had yeah we have a video and what we want to do is go to the video right now and it's going to look at some of these things that we're talking about and I wanted to set the the stage for that because you're really your background is unique the fact is that you're really reaching out into the communities bringing people into the system so let's look at this video and then we'll come back to that Andy thanks Hi, Sharon Wise from Grid Alternative, we're a nonprofit organization and we install solar panels for free to DC residents. And we wanted to know if you were interested in having some free solar panels installed in your, on your roof. When we're installing, we're just going to a house and we're installing. I never thought about what they go through just to get us that one house. So our outreach team are those boots on the ground in the community that knock on doors, that make phone calls, that hand out flyers, that table at events. It's really important to build trust and trust takes time oh, to build. And so people start to see okay. us in the gotcha. community and then they see us do one install and then they see someone in a grid t-shirt in the grocery store and then they see someone uh, tabling at an office on an aging event and so it starts to come together and it starts to become more familiar and we're not strangers anymore. I tell you, I just think this is fantastic. I just love this video. I mean, it's so well done and it tells about the, the outreach into the community, but the enthusiasm coming from, you know, the grid alternatives reaching to these homes, I think is almost infectious. So looking at all of that, what is SolarWorks DC? And then why do you think it's so important that you have the grids, what's called the solar core? And how do these two fit together? Okay, um, so SolarWorks DC is a program uh, that the district advised, uh, really DOEE, um, to 
And that's the Department of Energy and, and Environment. Environment. And yes. also uh, DOES, so um, Department of Employment Services, to uh, kind of um, expand upon the Solar for All program and um, bring a, a, a job training aspect um, to the district and help uh, people um, you know, move into the, to the solar industry. Um, and GRID was just chosen to, to implement the program for the, for the first year. And I think we've been doing a um, terrific job with it. Um, and you know, Solar Core is, is uh, our way of, of helping AmeriCorps um, implement a, a program for you know, moving people into the, the solar workforce as well. And so obviously those missions kind of align naturally. Um, and uh, for instance, my job as a, a solar core um, communications fellow, I, I interact a lot with the SolarWorks um, DC, um, uh, both the staff and the trainees, and I go out with the cohorts all the time, um, get to interact with uh, everyone, and my job is to tell their stories. Uh, so uh, Just yeah. like what you're doing right here. Exactly, I think it's exactly. absolutely fantastic, and this is a great slide that we have here from the work that you're actually doing. Uh, looking at the long-term development in these uh, communities that have been targeted, why do you think it's so important that you have these two programs, but then you're reaching in to create new green jobs, and actually you're creating small businesses within these communities at the same time? How do you see all this fitting together to bring development to the inner city in ways that people never thought of it in the past? Um, so I, I think um, the, the work that we're doing is uh, incredibly important in um, helping uh, people uh, kind of realize a, 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 you know, a self-sufficiency in uh, the inner city. They, they see that you know, they can get their um, energy not necessarily from Petco, but from the sun. And uh, they, you know, they can get a job in solar. Um, where they take those skills, you know, uh, they can they can move up in the solar industry. They can eventually maybe start solar companies of their own one day. Um, so, uh, yeah, the the green sector is is only going to grow, and uh, solar as well. It's growing 17 times faster than the rest of the United States economy. So it just offers tr tremendous opportunities. Let's say opportunity. that again. Now tell me, tell that mm -hmm. statistics again. Some people don't really get that. Tell yeah, us again. Yeah. Um, so solar is growing at 17 times the rate of the U.S. economy. As far as the d development mm -hmm. across all the sectors. Mm -hmm. with the, that is 17 times. That is absolutely incredible. Looking at the homeowners and, uh, and involving the communities and all that, how does GRID on a day-to-day -day basis keep proving to the community, we're here to help you, we're here to help the community, and we're here to help the future Washington, D.C., but this is going on all over the United States. Day-to-day, -day, how do you prove that? Uh, well, I, prove, I, th I think we prove it just by, you know, being out in the community and doing the job. And, and you know, you see uh, the clients like at, uh, towards the beginning of the video, um, they see the savings on their bills. and. Uh, you know, they talk um, to their uh, friends and family and neighbors, um, and so I think the, the impact spreads uh, from there. Um, of course, uh, you know, on, on my side of things, uh, the communications and outreach department, we try and get out um, into the community to, to, to tell people about our mission and the options that solar can give them. Um, yeah. Yeah, and also too, uh, seeing you know the workers right here, you know they're coming from within the community itself. Mm -hmm. and many of these are actually kin to you know the homes where they're actually installing the solar, or they're going to be living in a home that's going to be ha having solar. What do you think is the impact of that, where people have such an intimate connection on as far as the community, the families, the jobs, and the opportunities? How do you see that? changing things with the inner city, and then I have a follow-on question for that okay. very point. Well, uh, what you're kind of getting at is it's like, you know, holistic change. Um, it, it's change on, on all, all levels um, and from a bunch of different angles. Um, and we're not just trying to, uh, you know, a attack one part of the problem. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to affect change. Um, 
and, and at all levels solutions. within the community. Exactly, yeah. um, and in many different ways, so that it's more sustainable ultimately, yeah. um, and and less of you know a band aid or temporary fix. Yeah. And that's the whole thing too. What you're seeing here, as far as just like these young children, they're experiencing on a day to day basis. You know, they're going from their classroom back home, meaning I'm going into homes now, they actually have the solar, mm -hmm. you know, and, it, and there's a buzz in the community that I think is, it's really important. And over time, many experts says that, you know, the inner city will never, you know, have renewable energy. There's not real interest in all that. But GRID mm -hmm. is putting the explanation mark behind that saying is that they want it, they need it, and they're demanding it. Mm -hmm. Why is GRID able to make this kind of change and in essence, and in reality, you're proving the, many of the experts to be totally incorrect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do think Grid Alternatives is kind of um, turning that notion on its head that uh, you know there's there's no place for solar in the inner cities, um, and I, I think we're able to accomplish that because. Uh, you know, you get the, the your foot in the door with a, a few clients, and they see their bill uh, come down, mm -hmm. and uh, really, I mean, it kind of snowballs from there. Um, it's it's obvious that we have you know a, a business model that works, and we have um, solutions that are are sustainable and have have impact, and and it's just uh, carried forward. Yeah, and uh, you know, the diversity of people, you look at this photo here, I was actually at this event and Nicole and I reconnected. She was on a number of years ago, you know, on a similar type of topic and actually you can see the video there in the background. But when you see this turnout, over 100 people came out and particularly people your age coming mm -hmm. out and saying, this is important, we're going to do this. Yeah. So what are you seeing in this room here among the people are there that you think is really changing the dynamic as far as renewables, the dynamic of where we need to be going as a society for green jobs, and the opportunities for people your age. What do you see in this room? Um, so I, I see uh, excitement and uh, enthusiasm. Um, it's just building, you know, clean energy and solar, they used to be these fringe things, and now uh, they're, they're, they're catching on more and more. And, and Actually, they're way beyond just oh, yeah. being mainstream now. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's the dynamic. I, and it's the future. Um, and our organization is, is uh, looking to, to bring everyone into that fold, including underrepresented um, low-income communities. Uh, and that event is actually where we uh, debuted the, the Stone Soup film. Um, sorry, Stone Soup is, uh, is the company that made mm -hmm. that yeah. production. And we have a photograph that of some showing. of them doing it right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, looking at this whole thing, we're going out and we'll have your happy face up here. What do you see for the expansion of GRID the next two, three, five, ten years uh, going into the communities and the organization itself, but involving more and more people? And we have to be quick. Okay. 20 seconds. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, the, the, our clients will only continue to spread the word. I think we'll move into um, other facets of clean energy, such as uh, electric vehicles, um, possibly in the future, and, and we'll just continue to uh, our, grow our impact in that. Uh, this is Andrew Andy Eames, communications event fellow, Grid Alternatives. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it.
a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. You know, and the salary. Oh my god, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did you? To the Emerald Planet. Here again, your host, Dr. Sam. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock, President and Executive Director of Emerald Planet, Emerald Planet TV, and we come to you on a week to week basis looking in 144 different nations, looking for what we call the best of the best, or those thousand best practices, solutions that are making a difference as we move forward in the 21st century. And as we go to a planet that soon will have about 9 billion people on it, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people as far as the infrastructure? But one of the things that we need besides water and food, of course, is energy. And that's driving everything into today's uh, internet connected and the uh, internet of things as we move around the globe. And I have a young man sitting right beside me who's actually uh, in the construction industry working on solar and bringing solar to the inner city. And I think, Reggie, what you're doing is fantastic. This is Reginald, he goes by Reggie Chandler. He's a solar core uh, conservation fellow uh, with Grid Alternatives Mid-Atlantic. Welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you, I'm well, glad to be here. I'm glad to have you. You're a graduate of SolarWorks DC and the Solar Core programs. What did they train you and teach you in that time? And then what have you been able to carry forward that's actually helping you as far as your future, not just the future of the communities, but your future and the future for your family? They told me a lot about being, you know, hands-on and dealing with the different tools and being with solar and how delicate and how fragile things can be. You know, you learn everything down from a, from a, from a regular Phillips screwdriver down to a torque wrench and you know you have to torque certain things on solar panels to right. a certain precision. So it's, it's very detailed work and they, and they take you through every step of it so you can mature on your own and you know get a grasp of the industry. Yeah and, and when you finish this, this is, I mean you really do graduate from this program because I've seen some of the photographs and, and uh, some of the commencements if you will. Commencement means you're just really starting. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking at uh, getting your certification for this, what did that mean to you and mean to your family that you now really are certified and you can take that certificate, you can stay in Washington, D.C., but you can go to Texas, you can go to California, you can go to Alaska. A lot of places you can take that certificate and it really means something. What did it mean to you and your family to have that? Um, it, it just meant a great establishment for myself being, though I just finished school, not really understanding, you know, what's my next step? What am I going to do to mature myself? And so GRID was actually that next step. And they helped me in tremendous ways begin to become a man that I am today. And so I'm thankful for the experience that they had put me through. Yeah. Now, we have a video, and we're going to play that. And, uh, but I wanted to really set the stage for that because I think this uh, going through the training, uh, having the, the certificate, I think is really important because that, you know, half certificate will travel. Yes, it And will. I think that's important. But let's look at this uh, video, and then we're going to come back and talk more about this. Still look at you, right? As the inaugural class of SolarWorks DC, you are laying the groundwork for the success of the solar industry in Washington DC. The first time I got on the roof, I had next to no experience with any of this technology, and now I honestly feel confident going forth and like trying to go in for my uh, career in the industry. Honestly, thank you guys. It's been a great opportunity. I really appreciate it. Really what we're looking for is passion. If, we, if you're gonna show up and put in hard work, that's who we're looking for. We're also looking for people that are looking for a second chance or have maybe you know, lost their job or are new to this country or are returning citizens and haven't been working for a long time. We really wanna make sure that we're giving everybody an opportunity. 
the people, the, the sincerity and the, you know, the passion that almost everybody in this organization has for what they do, you know, is, is something you just don't see every day. I just appreciate everybody for showing me how to handle uh, this, this job and turn it into a career. Well, the whole process has been great. And, you know, I hope to see uh, even more greatness come out of this. I really do. I tell you, I just think this is absolutely fantastic, and I, I'm glad you're here as a graduate because we really wanted to tie this together, you being here, and then to uh, see this video clip as far as the graduates. And then you, you see the, the response from the community, how they're saying is that we want more of this. We feel this is very real. So looking at this, and the prior to the uh, solar works that you were involved in, what did you see then and what are you seeing now that it, almost like it's a, a career but a clear path to success for the future? I say with the solar core program, they, 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 I mean, well not also the solar core, but the solar works program, they, they set you up where you take tests to get an understanding of what you're doing in the field so you have a clear understanding of what you're doing and then they, they get you hands on so it, it builds you and matures you to those next levels from learning in the classroom to getting out on the field to now you're taking interviews for your placement somewhere. So it's a, it's a very good step and, and good career path. Yeah, and the whole thing about GRID too, I mean, it is nationwide. So I mean, if you decide you wanna move around the country, you have the opportunity to do that. But also for the first time, I think, uh, looking at solar energy, and I've been around, you know, the 30 plus years that, you know, solar has really been, you know, starting to evolve. Mm -hmm. Now it's galloping forward as far as what it's doing. Uh, but people really feel like this is a real career and they can do this their lifetime and contribute to the communities, their own family, but carry it forward. So looking at what you're doing here in Washington, D.C., how you see that blossoming out uh, from yourself, but also from the community looking at how it's being involved now in something. It really is a nationwide movement. I know going through my own neighborhood and even before I met GRID, I didn't see too many solar panels. And then going into the SolarWorks program, we're installing in my own neighborhood a few times. So it's like you get to go back and you see how the whole neighborhood is adapting to the change. You get to see how more people are becoming welcoming to the program itself and they want to, you know, go green. They want to better their you know, situation, so it's just good all around. Yeah, and I think this is something that really is a fundamental change. I've been a dozen years in Washington, D.C., involved in Ward 8, Ward 7, you know, some of these are which are really financially, educationally challenged, but you really see the development going on there, and in some ways, they're ahead of all the other, you know, the, the more uh, higher income uh, wards within Washington DC because they're getting more and more of these in there. How does that make you feel when you go work day to day and all of a sudden you're driving down the street and you've got five homes, you go back in a month now seven homes that have solar? I, I think about it like those those people are taking advantage of the solar panels for the energy for their home like their children is using re good energy that's better in their education which they can go to school and you know that betters them because everything started from those solar panels and it goes down that core street to you know their education or their better advancement. Yeah and the whole thing about it too Reggie is that they're saving real money on a month-to-month -month basis and that goes back into education, goes into clothing, goes into the college fund. I mean there's so many things that we have. But Andy of DC is uh, asking about uh, looking at this when you were before you were just thinking about going into it why did you make that decision? That's what Andy wants to know. Why did what clicked in your mind that says I really ought to do this because this is going to become my future but it's the future really of Washington DC but the whole United States. I would say because um, you know starting out going to some people's homes and, and, and putting it on their rooftops like they they were in a tight situation and now they this get is to, financially or yeah, otherwise yes mm -hmm. and and this is like you know when the job is done they get to come out and they're like wow my home looks beautiful now also I'm not so 
you know, f struggling in, in my light situation, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's a great advancement and they, and they get to see it on a day-to-day -day basis. They get to see it and they're using it and creating energy. So it, it's good. Yeah. And I think the whole thing, you know, you see the joy people here are doing their work and uh, working on the homes and all that, but through the eyes of the children, what, it, what are you sensing or how is this really fundamentally changing them? Because all of a sudden there's more money in the home. Uh, you know, they're really plugged into the sun, if yeah, you will. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you see that and, and what are you sensing from the children, how this is actually making a difference in these inner city homes and, the, and communities? I just previously had an install where um, uh, the homeowner's daughter had came out and she might have been maybe five or six years old and she was our baby SIS as we call it or our junior SIS. She was bringing us waters, we were sending it up to the roof, she was very helpful and they understand the change that's coming in their neighborhood and they understand what's going on in their home so it's good to see that even the children are seeing the worth and the work that we're putting in. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. What would be the three things that you've gained from this experience? Not the fact that it's a job and you're doing all that, but what, what are you gaining from it that is changing you as a person or allowing you to change people in the community? What, what, I mean, what it, really excites you and takes you back day after day after day? I would say, this is, these panels are heavy. Yeah, I would say the life skills, number one, that it gave me, like my everyday, it, it changed me as far as my health. You know, my health, you have to have a healthy diet to get up on that roof in the sunlight and work. It also, you know, got me my precision. You know, you want everything to be aligned and straight and done properly. It, it helped me bring that into the real world. And I would just say, like, the, the commitment and the dedication it showed me, like, once you start something, you have to finish it. So starting to put those rails up, microinverters, and then the glass at the end, you, you see your start from finish and you get to smile at it. So those, it's very good. Yeah, I tell you, this is a fantastic smile we see on this young man right here. You, you recognize this guy, don't you? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Well, we just about run out of time. Um, and uh, looking at all of this, what do you see for GRID, for yourself, for the community, say over the next two, three, five, eight, maybe even 10 years, as far as where this is all going and the long-term impact you're seeing for all those that I just named? I would say, you know, going forward, um, being in D.C., I just plan on seeing more grid signs in people's yards, and that's just notifying me. So that excites me that, you, huh? Yes, it's, it's just notifying me that grid is expanding and more people are, are becoming more welcome to it. Yeah, I think this is absolutely fantastic. I think we'll go off with this photograph here. But uh, young person looking at us, like Andy of D.C., what, is, what should they be thinking as far as grid, but also sol solar energy renewables for the city? They we got to be quick. They should be thinking about giving back to their community and just making the, the planet and the earth a green place. Uh, I tell you, I think that's uh, fantastic. Could, nobody could say it better. Thank you. Reggie, thank you for being with us. This is Reginald Reggie Chandler, Service Corps uh, Construction Fellow, Grid Alternatives, Mid-Atlantic, uh, all-around good guy, and uh, <laughs> working hard on the roofs. But thank you for being with us as we look at renewable energies in the inner city, the change is bringing, the change is making to America as we create the Emerald Planet.